Hi Floss Tube. This is Stephanie, the Ivy House Crafter, coming at you from my bedroom with my husband's World of Warcraft map in the background because that's how cool we are. <laughs> um, I'm Stephanie, the Ivy House Crafter. I don't remember if I already said that. This is my channel about cross stitch, obviously. Apparently I'm in a slightly strange mood, but um, that's okay. I can still show cross-stitch even when my brain is going in weird directions. All I have to do is hold it up and talk about it. Um, let's see. As far as any news or updates or anything, it's my birthday this week. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Th Thanksgiving is this week um, here in the United States for everyone who is celebrating. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, it's my favorite holiday, uh, partly because every few years my birthday lands on Thanksgiving and partly because the food is like the best food of the year um, and I like getting to visit with family. My parents are going to be coming down from Idaho and visiting with us this week and I'm really excited about that. All right, the first cross stitch piece that I worked on this week was my mysterious adventure project from Ink Circles. This was back in or released one part at a time back in I think 2019, um, and I haven't finished it yet, but I'm I'm getting close. I'm getting really close. Um, let's see. All I did since last time was finish Monster Lake, and that's this goofy looking little guy right here. Um, in the actual pattern, the lake is shaped differently and the monster is a little bit longer. I had to change them both around to make them fit and um, like I changed the, the lake from one that's kind of kind of like this one but upside down version of it. I didn't want them to look too much alike, and I had to make the monster smaller to fit inside the lake. He barely fits inside the lake. That is one big monster. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm excited to be so close to finishing. There's not much room left that I have to fill. I just gotta fill it, and like I've mentioned before this one it's sometimes it's hard to work on because I have to be in the mood for lots of small motifs that use several different colors each but um, when I am in the mood it's a fun fun project to work on okay the next piece um, is a new start I have I mean this is kind of my month of new starts this one was unplanned. I wasn't going to start it, but I I had the pattern and I had gotten the floss out and I had made a project bag, which I'll show a little later. And long story short, I started it. This is the pattern that I um, that I just released and showed in my last video. This is subtlety and it's inspired by um, rug patterns. And um, I meant to do this last week, but I forgot. I am going to give away one PDF of this pattern. If you would like to be entered to possibly win that um, free PDF, I would like you to use the word <clears throat> use the word subtlety in your comment, and that is S U B T L E T Y. It's not the easiest word to spell, but that's the name of the chart. So if you want the chart, you're going to have to spell it. <laughs> so once again, um, use the word subtlety in your comment if you would like to win a free copy of this chart. Um, this is, since it is a PDF pattern, it's open to anyone, anywhere, just as long as you have an email that I can send it to. And now let's look at what I've done. So I started in the middle and I'm working in this <clears throat> general area. I've been calling it my my soft and subtle Eye of Sauron because 
It resembles a fiery eye if you look closely or not closely or squint or something. I don't know. The more I work on it, the less it looks like the Eye of Sauron. But this is where I've got so far. I'm not sure. Oh, that's a little bit better lighting, maybe. I'm not sure if you can see. I have started filling in the 3865 in here. Um, because this is full coverage, and so all these stitches are filled in. And like down here, they're not. And in here, it's maybe hard to capture the details on on film or on the camera but anyway the colors are a little bit just a touch more vibrant in real life than on the camera because I'm using my laptop and the camera is just not all that great but anyway I am really enjoying working on this one it's so pretty it's way prettier in real life than on the camera. Once again, subtlety, gorgeous. I love it. Okay, the next piece I got out was Jeanette Douglas Blooming Bouquets number four. Beautiful. And before I had like these three flowers and some of the greenery and since then I have added let me get it out get this put away Do -do 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 -do. I have added the three yellow flowers and the vase or urn or flower pot. I'm not sure what we're calling it, but um, it's turning out really pretty. Let's see how close I can get without it looking weird. I don't know. And I have to show it at a little bit of an angle because the window is over there and not over there <laughs> and not in front of me. So the light is this way, but um, this is such a pretty pattern. I just, I love working on this one. This is being, st once again, I keep forgetting the fabrics. Tell the fabrics. This is 40 count flax Zweigart linen, and I'm stitching it one over two using most of the called for silks. I think I've replaced one or two with um, DMC or with just a random over dyed cotton but mostly silk and for informational purposes this one is being stitched on 18 count ada two over one and the map is 32 count vintage sahara okay i think i have like a little hair or a fuzzy stuck to my lip you know, when you get chapstick and then things stick to your lips and you're just like, ah. Anyway, the next piece I worked on is Promise of Spring because I'm a seasonal stitcher. Not. <laughs> Sorry, the camera keeps shaking. Like I said, I'm filming on my laptop right now and I'm sitting on my bed and the laptop is propped up on a box. And so anytime I move, the bed moves and therefore the um, laptop moves. Anyway. Promise of Spring. So last time I had this flower and this flower. So this time I added the word hope and these little motifs down here on the edge uh, and, and the top. In the pattern they are actually in white but I want, or not white, I think it's like 712, it's like a, a cream color. But I wanted something that would stand out a little bit more on the fabric, and you can't tell with the lighting, but it really does stand out more. This is um, a, a pale blue color, and I also used it in this flower, um, in the stripe that was meant to be left unstitched. But I stitched it in blue because I'm doing this on Chantilly cream instead of 
Dove, which is a bluish color. Anyway, yeah, 36 count Chantilly cream. I added Hope and the little heart flower raindrop thingies. That's what I'm calling them. I'm calling, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that they're symbolizing raindrops because it's spring and it rains in the spring. This one is being stitched with DMC. Not quite the called for conversion. I'm doing my own conversion to get it to match the colors on the cover better. Or not at all in some cases. <laughs> all right. The last piece that I worked on was this small Ode to Autumn by Darling and Whimsy Designs. And this one was being stitched over one on an uneven 28 count, so it's 28 one way and 26 the other. And I finished it! Look, it is so cute! Autumn, the year's last loveliest smile. Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday and autumn is my favorite season. Absolutely 100%. I did not use the called for, I just um, kitted it up with flosses that I had on hand, mostly over dyed, the darkest brown leaves um, and, and acorn bits, those are a, a DMC, I think it's like 898 or something, but everything else is over dyed um, just from my stash. There's like sarsaparilla and sassy brass and one that doesn't even have a name because it was uh, mislabeled or something. Anyway, so that is done. And this being done, I'm going to go ahead and give away this chart as well. So if you would like to be entered to win Ode to Autumn, I would like you to use the word smile in your comment because it's the year's last loveliest smile. So subtlety to win the subtlety pattern, smile to win Ode to Autumn. All right, that's my cross stitching. I did a couple other things. Um, I did work on my afghan some more, but I think I'll wait and show that again next week because I only put in like three to three stripes and so I want to make more progress before I show it again. Um, I also made two new project bags. They're just about identical, so I'll just show the one. Um, I had this cute school fabric and since, um, since I'm a homeschooling mom, uh, I thought that it would be fun to do some school bags. <laughs> so, so this is the outside and the inside is yellow with tiny white polka dots. I don't know if they're going to show up and it matches the yellow zipper. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little bit of um, glitter in the vinyl that was I have two types of vinyl on hand right now one is really thin and I would have to double it in order to use it for a project bag and the other one is glittery so glittery vinyl <laughs> as I continue to make project bags I will get better vinyl anyway one other thing that I did, besides the two project bags that um, are almost exactly the same, and, and one of them I'm using for subtlety, and then the other one is for this project that I have not yet started. But this was one that I'm, I'm gonna start soon, Pumpkin Harvest from Lena Lawson Needle Arts. And um, I haven't started it yet because I'm waiting on some flosses to get here. But I did dye some fabric for it. This is a really soft 14 count Ada that I got from the freebie table at Stitch West. And I wanted a different color. I thought it would be fun to stitch on yellow. 
it is not showing up nearly as yellow as it actually is. This looks much more mild, but um, it's dyed with a little bit of dark brown writ dye, but not enough to make it dark brown, and a little bit of um, instant coffee grounds, or I don't know if it's called grounds, but um, you know, you, you coffee dye things with instant coffee granules, perhaps? I don't drink coffee. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I keep it for dyeing fabric. And the yellow color is from turmeric. I used maybe a little bit more turmeric than I should have, but um, yeah. Oh, I wish that this was going to show up as yellow as it actually is, but it's just, it's not. It's very washed out. Anyway, but you can see the, the modeling on it. And that's fun. And it's folded really nice and exact so that I know exactly where the center is when I do start it. So again, that is going to be Pumpkin Harvest. And it's going to look like it's in a field of yellow hay and straw and grass that he's dragging this pumpkin through. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I have done a little bit of knitting. Um, I'm making washcloths. And it's just like a super simple washcloth pattern with like yarn overs and knit two together to decrease and stuff like that. But um, I'm, I'm going to be using these as face cloths because I don't know, I just really like the feel of, of soft knit cotton on my face when I'm cleaning my face. So, um, very simple. I'm not even making them consistent. You can see that one of them is bigger than the other one because this one I got tired of making it bigger sooner than I did on this one. <laughs> I just go until I'm like, I don't want to make it bigger anymore. So I start making it smaller and then I finish it off. Anyway, so that's that's the last thing that I have been working on. Um, one more thing that I did want to show and kind of ask is um, which one of my birthday month chart starts, charts? Which one of my, oh my gosh. Which one of these should I start next? Because I'm starting stuff this month because it's my birthday. So I have Happy Fall, y'all, from Country Cottage Needleworks. And I have the Beady Bauman Sampler from Twin Peak Primitives. And I'm going to be starting both of them. But um, which one should I start next? You know, sh should be my very next start. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So that's either Happy Fall or B.D. Bauman um, or The Sampler, you know, whatever. Let me know what you think. All right. That's everything that I have to show. Um, like I said, it's my birthday coming up tomorrow. That's crazy. I'm going to be 38 years old. I don't feel old, but I don't feel particularly young either. I don't know. I guess this is what late 30s feels like. I'm going to be... What am I going to be doing? I might take a trip up to Shepherd's Bush. Not that I need any more patterns or fabrics or flosses. But I might need a trip to Shepherd's Bush just because. <laughs> um... So that might be happening. My husband and I are going on a double date with um, another couple in our congregation. Um, this Saturday we're going to a reading of Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. And that's going to be really cool. And we can dress up if we want to. So I might dress up in Victorian English dress as much as... I can with what I have on hand. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
And of course, Thanksgiving is coming up. My parents will be here on Wednesday and we're going to make all sorts of delicious foods. Um, I'm mostly plant-based, so we're gonna have like a, a chickpea and brown rice and oat holiday tort thing for me, but there's also gonna be turkey and ham because everyone else in my family likes to eat meat. <laughs> but um, like all the side dishes are gonna be like, mainly plant-based and super healthy, but also super delicious because plants are freaking delicious. I don't know if everybody knows that, but they are good. So anyway, I am looking forward to a lot this week and I hope that everybody has a great week and I will see you next time. Happy stitching everyone. Bye.